Hello, this is Matt on the Moon Lambeau channel. You want to know how to get rich? I'm not even going to tease it. I'm going to tell you right now, you don't even have to watch the rest of this latest Moon Lambeau hot, 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 hot jam. Here, this is it. That's all you have to do. Become, uh, become the chair of, uh, of the SEC. Uh, Sue Ripple. Then uh, just quit and get crypto rich by doing crypto stuff all of a sudden. Uh, take a look at this headline. This is one of many. From This from you today. After suing Ripple, former SEC chair joins crypto unicorn as advisor. Ah, yes, indeed. Uh, the most notable asshat in all the land, Jay Clayton. Doing more Jay Clayton stuff. After not protecting investors for many years as it pertains to crypto and uh, specifically having... Uh, not a care in the world about uh, harm coming to SEC uh, uh, harm coming to XRP holders as a result of SEC inactions followed by nonsensical action in terms of SEC going after Ripple claiming they sold XRP as a security. After all of that, now uh, Jay Clayton is uh, trying to get his trying to get his piece here. So I want to talk about that, and also um, there's <laughs> oh man. This, this firm that he became a part of, like here's a headline. This is the article I'm going to run through from Cointelegraph titled, Former SEC Chair Jay Clayton Joins Fireblocks Advisory Board. And so Fireblocks, they excitedly tweeted about this, and um, it did not go well. And so I read a handful of these tweets, and I was laughing. So I'm going to go through, pick some at random. Um, I haven't read all of the ones I'm going to cover, so we can find out together what the hell's in here. Uh, we're we going to have a killer time here, but... Uh, I do want to be clear at the outset. I do not have a legal or financial background of any kind. I'm not offering legal or financial advice, and you should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say or write. I'm just an enthusiast who enjoys making YouTube videos all up on the internet because it's a fun hobby. And uh, when this asshat Jay Clayton does stuff, we got to talk about it. Shout out to James Rule XRP. This is a fun tweet. He wrote, as my fellow XRP YouTuber, James Rule XRP, hashtag XRP community. <coughs> oh, sorry, guys. Hashtag XRP community. Let's just call it Ripplegate. Scandals and the U.S. government starring the SEC, Jay Clayton, and William Hedman. I like that one, so I thought I'd cover it. And then here's here's the right... I should probably... I'm going to think about it. I, I should probably use this picture of Jay Clayton as the thumbnail. Uh, I don't know yet. I, I, I do the thumbnails after I, after I record here. But anyway, uh, into, into this piece now. This is something. Uh, in his new role, Clayton will aid Fireblocks in navigating the regulatory hurdles for developing and deploying digital asset infrastructure, especially around capital markets. Doesn't it, doesn't it sound like Jay Clayton's perfectly suited for that? Now, mind you, uh, during his confirmation hearing, Jay Clayton was asked not one single question about cryptocurrencies. I want to assure you that he was not, uh, he was he did not end up in this role uh, be, because of his cryptocurrency acumen, let's say. This is not the case. <laughs> anyway, Jay Clayton, the former chair of the United States Securities and Exchange Commission, has accepted an advisory role with blockchain infrastructure provider Fireblocks, marking a significant addition to a company that only recently achieved unicorn status. In joining Fireblock's advisory board, Clayton acknowledged that he shares the company's view that, quote, digital asset custody requires the same level of service as traditional custody, while also striving for better regulatory outcomes, end quote. Now, that's something that I can agree with because it's generic enough. And it is true. Like, look, I've said this before. When it comes to crypto custody, uh, you know, this utopia that early Bitcoiners had in mind where everybody just has their own private keys. There are no banks anymore. That was never going to happen. Uh, people like customer support, as it turns out. So uh, they want to know that if, if something goes wrong, uh, they, 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 like, they're effectively either literally or figuratively insured. And, and so if you've got a bank that is custodying your cryptocurrency, fine, yeah. I mean, there's a risk to anything in life, but it, some people will view the bank as less risky than them, than, than themselves holding it. Because think about this too. Like if you're custodying yourself, your private keys for, like, in, in Bitcoin Maxi's eyes, uh, the entirety of your net worth just about, uh, what do you do? You, you put you put the private key, do you memorize it? What if you forget it? What if something happens? What if you forget one of the words? Then your fortune's just gone? Or do you, do you put it under a mattress? Like what the hell do you do? Sock drawer? Sock drawer's a good one, right? Where the hell do you put it? Uh, I, I, I see, like, people, there are so many people that are never going to want to do that. 
And and so it is true that in terms of digital asset custody, it makes all the sense in the world to have institutional grade options for that, which by the way, is what uh, PolySign seems to be going for. Uh, that, that would be the entity that uh, Arthur Brito and D David Schwartz are working on. They, they're both um, uh, creators of the XRP ledger and XRP itself. So they're working on PolySign and we really don't know any specifics about it other than it's like institutional grade custody solutions. Uh, but looking forward to when they can finally divulge what the hell it is that they've been working on for all of these years. But yeah, of course, that's the direction to go. Anyway, peace continues. Michael Shalov, CEO and co-founder of Fireblocks, said Clayton will, quote, help to advance further the safety and security of the Fireblocks infrastructure for capital market participants and investors, end quote. <laughs> is that what he's going to do? Well, I'll tell you what. I'll tell you how the uh, public's perceiving this. Not very well, Fireblocks. Um, as you'll see in just a moment, like, that's going to be a very fun part of the video as, as soon as I hop over the, the, the Twitter thread and all of the XRP community responding to this. <laughs> Anyway, Clayton headed the SEC between 2017 and 2020, where he helped navigate complex and frequently evolving regulatory requirements for the digital asset industry. Clayton was present during the 2017 cryptocurrency bull market, where issues surrounding initial coin offerings and security tokens were at the fore. Fireblocks represents Clayton's second high-profile crypto engagement since leaving the securities regulator in December 2020. In March of this year, Clayton joined a regulatory advisory council, council for One River Asset Management, a crypto-focused investment manager. The asset manager said Clayton was tapped for his vast regulatory and policy experience. Yeah, he doesn't know a damn thing about crypto. <laughs> I cannot read. No, it's certainly not a sufficient amount. And uh, But now he's involved with all this crypto stuff? That's a little weird. And so at One River Asset Management, by the way, that's the firm that is seeking to get uh, SEC approval uh, for a Bitcoin ETF. And I swear, if that is the first Bitcoin ETF to get uh, to get approved, then they're just, like, there is no trust in government. Like, what in the ever-loving hell? Like, if that happens, that would be absurd. Now, if, if a number get approved and then this ends up being one of them, okay, well, uh, that, that's less sketchy. But if it's the first one, and especially if other ones after that get approved, that, that's not a good look, my friends. That's definitely not a good look. Um, so here you go. He sued Ripple, then he, he bailed out of the SEC, of course, and then uh, now he's making a whole bunch of money in crypto, it seems, right? And so here you have Fireblocks, which I, you just, you gotta wonder, like, did they not think that maybe there would be some negative ramifications given how he's not exactly popular in the world of crypto? Ugh. Anyway, so here's Fire, Fireblocks. They're all giddy about uh, about this new partnership with them. And they wrote, Today we're excited to welcome Jay Clayton, <coughs> uh, former chairman of the SEC, to the Fireblocks Board of Advisors. Clayton will help Fireblocks and its customers navigate the evolving market and regulatory dynamics affecting the development and deployment of solutions for emerging digital asset infrastructure. Hashtag crypto, hashtag digital assets. And so, like, I didn't even want to think of anything terribly witty, but I did respond to this, and I just wrote, this is why we can't have nice things. That's it. I just, I, I just, I, I read this, I recognize what's happening here. I think it's absurd that Jay Clayton's doing what he's doing, and I... Uh, uh, well, I, well, think about Here's the deal. Like, I'm legitimately disgusted by this guy, you know, and it takes a lot for me to say that about a human. But like the degree to which he financially harmed people with complete disregard, I, I just it, it goes beyond just not respecting him. Like, I, I just I think he's awful. Like, like this is not a good person. Um, now, here you have an XRP community member named Moon Chaser who wrote, we are so very sorry to hear about your association with Jay Clayton. <laughs> you gotta like that. I like that. It's like simple. It's to the point. It's to the point. I like it though. Um, here's another one. I've only read a, a handful of these, but they're, some of these are really good. So I'm just going to go through and pick some up because this, this is good times right here. Um, here's somebody named Crypto Joey Pie Fingers who had to say, If you're associating with Scum Clayton... We can only assume your corruption runs as deep as his. You've shown your hand, Fireblocks, bad move. And he's got some clown face emojis. Uh, Mac Attack XRP wrote, OMG, what the heck, with a bunch of clown faces. Uh, here you've got Panos, who shared a gift that just says 100% corruption. Uh, here you have a guy named Dave, who wrote, Fireblocks officially became a circus today. And he shared a picture of uh, that, that clown picture of Jay Clayton. 
And then he wrote, look at the response here, Fireblocks. Is this corrupt Ethereum pusher the person you want advising you and attached to your name? Probably not a good look to have him on your board. Air Force Dave wrote, disgusting. And so are you by association. Uh, here's what uh, XRP The Standard Productions wrote. He answered your job listing for rotten, corrupt, scum-sucking former SEC dirtbag, huh? Congrats on the hire. <laughs> I like that one. That's a good one. Uh, Dazzling XRPL wrote, Looks like you guys need to reconsider. The comments don't speak very well of this decision. I wonder what your clients would think of this. Um, then uh, Neats Bucks here wrote, uh, here is some free advice for your advisory board. Don't associate with this man. Should I keep going? I, I think these are fun. I hope I'm not doing too much of this if it's too much too overkill or making the video. But like, I think this is fun. Um, Richard Soar wrote, Wow, what advice could he possibly give? He struggled to give any in his previous endeavor. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Mech1988 wrote, Why would you invite such a piece of S word into your ranks? You have to censor that one. For the children's is... In the backward, in the background, uh, Crypto Dave thirteen XRP wrote, "Gross." <laughs> it's just it's gross right there, uh, with a gift that says, "Huge mistake, huge." <laughs> uh, Mister Use Case wrote, "They add lizards to boards of advisors." <laughs> That's really good there. I like that. Uh, and then you take Jungle Link, my fellow expert YouTuber, because he's been called um, like the Lizard King, basically, which I think is funny. Uh, Sparky wrote, that's a bad look for your company. XRPP Holder uh, wrote, the revolving door continues. All of the uh, S word, uh, uh, well, yeah, emoji, you can see on your screen. Uh, you could hire, you pick him. Yikes. Talk about a PR nightmare. Uh, Blue Net wrote, just a matter of time before that position comes free again. That criminal is going to jail. Inquiries already started, and uh, his time is up. By the way, he's not kidding about inquiries. I'm not going to talk about this in this video. I made a whole separate video where I covered this thoroughly. But here's a headline from uh, Bitcoin.com. Government watchdog investigates conflicts of interest involving SEC officials, crypto, XRP, Ripple lawsuit. Yeah, so a, a, a government watchdog is looking into uh, what's going on there, specifically with Jay Clayton and William Hinman. So how about that? We'll see if anything comes of it. But hey, I'm glad somebody's trying to do something here. Um, I don't know if there's anything else that catches my eye here. Uh, it's just, I mean, these are all great comments. Don't get me wrong. It says I can't go on through these forever. <laughs> the video will never end because... Actually, you know, for fun, let's see how many comments there are. I think... Where do I go to do that? Wait. Yeah, because it doesn't tell you when you're at the top of this thing. I think I might have to go to their stupid actual page here. Um, if it, yeah, here we go. 543 comments. On the, on the first, so there's a, it was a two-parter. Um, let's see if there's, on the second one, uh, does it show? Wait, I don't know, it's not showing the second one. Or, oh, that is the second one. Well, where's the first one? Down here? I bet there's even more comments than that, actually. Did I scroll past it? Uh, maybe I did. Well, you, whatever. It, it, it doesn't matter. The point is there's, like, a ridiculous quantity of, of people, like, number of people within the XRP community that are having a blasty blast with this and making their voices heard, as we all should, should like, we uh, we have every right to respond. And uh, I, I wonder if they were caught off guard or not, because I don't know anything about this firm, and uh, outside of that, I'd say nothing against them, but uh, this does seem like a, a, a questionable decision. Like, this, this guy wrecked people's lives financially, Jay Clayton did, and uh, they, they won him on board. I, what do you do with that? Like, seriously, what do you do with that? Uh, and then I want to briefly just mention uh, this, this next topic here um, having to do with Coinbase. Uh, so they're, uh, they launched in Japan. You may have heard at this point. Uh, no XRP. Uh, no XRP for you, right? And so my fellow XRP YouTuber, uh, Crypto Eddie, uh, tweeted out the following. Makes no sense to me that Coinbase launched in Japan today and they did not include XRP. Unless Mr. Katow had something to say slash pull through the blockchain association, question mark, or is this Coinbase bias? Need to research more. So they're listing five at launch here, five cryptocurrencies, Bitcoin, Litecoin, Bitcoin Cash, Ethereum, and XLM. That's right. They're not listing XRP. They're, they're listing a clone of XRP, which is XLM. And nothing against XLM. Like, I, I hold it, by the way. But, uh... WTF might like what what in the ever loving hell going on here uh and so given that like I understand and I, I don't give Coinbase a hard time for them halting the trading of XRP because 
like they're looking out for their business. They're protecting their employees. They all have families. I got that. Uh, I blame the SEC for putting exchanges in a position where that seems to be the most legally prudent thing to do. Now, when you're talking about Coinbase launching in Japan, well, good for them for expanding and all, but I got to wonder, legal implications for XRP? Like, is that an actual reason in Japan? Like, that's that's a harder pitch. Now, I would love to know, so it, I, I would love to seriously know what the likes of, like, John Deaton and, and Jeremy Hogan and James Filan and any uh, any other attorneys within the XRP community have to say about that. Is it possible? Is it plausible? Seriously. That they could actually choose to not list XRP at launch in Japan because they also operate in the United States. Could that somehow actually be a legal problem? If so, then I guess I'd give them a pass. But I got to kind of wonder, could it really be? And so I don't have any evidence that there's bias. If there is, if there isn't, I, I don't know. Um, I, I know a lot of people years ago um, thought that there was bias against XRP specifically when when uh, there are only like four cryptocurrencies available for purchase on Coinbase in the United States. Um, that, which is different than what we're talking about here with XRP in Japan, but I, I will say back then, I was one of the people that didn't feel that way. I was like, I don't see evidence of bias. I see that there are thousands of cryptocurrencies and they have a business model where, which means, which it was at the time anyway, set up in such a way that they they didn't want to adopt many cryptocurrencies because they were the most uh, conservative uh, exchange that I've ever seen at the time anyway. They've kind of changed their business model. They were public about that. But back then, they were very conservative about adding cryptocurrencies to, to their platform. Because with crypto being what it was, especially back then, uh, there there were trust issues. And there still are trust issues that are fair to address in crypto today. But back then, it was even worse. It was way, way worse. And so they just wanted to have a brand where they were operating in such a way that uh, there wouldn't be all sorts of terrible headlines, which might uh, impact how they were viewed. So it was a brand thing, basically. Now, in hindsight, you know, they looked back and they, they, they have been vocal about it. So like, OK, because uh, they, they, they shifted gears. They did change like, yeah, we want to list every cryptocurrency we can effectively. So they did change. But before they shifted that business model, XRP wasn't getting listed. And I don't think it it was specifically because of XRP. I mean, yeah, they've got their they have their criteria set for figuring out this or that. But I, I, I'm not convinced it was a bias against it for, uh, you know, they don't like people at Ripple or this or that, whatever it may be. Um, I just didn't see any evidence of that. And uh, and then all of a sudden the floodgates open. They they listed XRP and a bunch of other stuff. But the fact that they had only listed four cryptocurrencies and XRP was not one of them to me, I was like, well, there are a thousand. What about the other ones? So they're biased against all the other top 10 cryptocurrencies that aren't on there, too. Like, that didn't make sense to me. And so when they added Bitcoin Cash, which they did late 2017, that was at least an easier decision because that was a fork. So, you know, like uh, it seemed like that would probably be less of a legal problem, let's say. Um, but even that, they, they you know, they, they, there was a bit of a lag time before even that got listed. But that, yeah, in hindsight, that that's not a surprise that they listed that and they did that. But yeah, so I, I don't, I think it was just more so a bad business decision than any sort of actual bias against XRP. That's the way I look at it. And if you feel differently, well, you can just get out. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> if you feel differently, that's fine. Uh, but for me, it, it just, I never saw any evidence. So I just, it, for me, it's that simple. But um, let me know what you think. I'll go ahead and wrap up here. It's probably a good stopping point. I am not a financial advisor. You should not buy or sell anything because of anything that I say are right. That would be a very, very, very bad idea. Until next time, to the moon, Nambo.